All right, today is Wednesday, November 25th, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. We have lots in the agenda, very important discussion in the options market analysis, and we are covering the slew of economic data we got this morning in the headlines of the day segment. Charts, we got the usual plus Target and Nordstrom because I entered a trade there and I want to show you something and stick around for the conclusion of this video because I got a lot of questions about the quote unquote mysterious entity that has been pumping the market overnight. I do have a very interesting theory and I want you to hear me out during the conclusion of this video. And now, moving on to cover the market's closing. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the red, declining 173.77 points or 0.58%. The Nasdaq, different picture, closing in the green, 57.62 points or a gain of 0.48%. The S&P 500, somewhere in the middle, closing in the red by 5.76 points or 0.16%. And here is the sector's performance for the day, muted in general, but we did see technology closing in the green and capturing the gold medal for silver and the second place consumer defensives and the third for the bronze consumer cyclicals the laggards of the day led by the winner of the week so far energy followed by industrials and basic materials and here is the futures market review the notable activities today for crude oil another day of gains over two percent or so we heard some news about the rumors that the Trump administration is preparing a last act in foreign policy by launching strikes against Iran. Furthermore, we saw an oil tanker, a Greek oil tanker, being attacked on the coast of Saudi Arabia. Yesterday, there was a missile attack against an oil storage facility also in Saudi Arabia. So you're seeing a lot of volatility going on in the Middle East that is adding to the tailwind for crude oil. The decline in the dollar, the Biden administration trajectory to lower the supply, so many tailwinds for crude oil right now. And what's going on with softs? Coca, soft day for coca, taking a break and declining over 2%. Cotton, closing almost 1% to the downside. Muted action for OJ. Coffee is a notable gainer for the day in softs, up by 1.38%. Another green day, modest one for lumbar. However, sugar declining by over 1.5%. Sugar and coca, the underperformers in softs futures today. What about metals? Gold muted. Silver muted, copper, similar story, but we did see gains for platinum, continuation of the gains, and notable declines here of 1% or so for palladium. The tear in meat continues, and we see gains here for lean hogs, feeder cattle, and live cattle, although lagging the gains in feeder and lean hogs. What about grains? Mixed day, we saw notable declines for soybeans, corn, wheat, and oats. The notable gainer for the day is rough rice up over 1% or so. And moving on to the big casino, the options market. What do we see today? Leading the action in the hottest table by far is Palantir Technologies, aka the deep state software. It is becoming a very, very attractive gambling stock for the Robin Hoodies and the likes. It is a tech name after all. It is cheap. Only 28 bucks or so. The options are cheap. So why not? Let's ruin this one and create a ton of volatility. The name was up over 20% today. But here it is leading the action in the options market with over 1.4 million contracts traded today. 
over 70% of those were calls. At number two, Tesla with 1.4 million contracts, oh, about 68% of those were calls. Apple at number three with over 1.1 million contracts, 74% of those were calls. And of course, you see Slack Technologies work, W-O-R-K, significant uptick of activities here, specifically before the announcement of the rumor about Salesforce acquiring Slack. Very interesting insider stuff here. Over 600,000 contracts traded today and over 73% of those were calls. And here are the interesting trades for the day. But before we start, let's point out something here. You saw the action in Palantir up significantly today. Uh, we talked about the bet we saw yesterday where the trader is committing over seven and a half million bucks for the trade, betting for upside in Palantir. A lot of you messaged me today, said, wow, look at Palantir and the trade you talked about yesterday. Should we start following these trades? What do we do? Because it is very interesting. And it is very notable if you are a daily viewer of this show, specifically this segment. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we found very interesting activities in the bullish side for JWN, Nordstrom, and another name, Aflac. I followed the one for Aflac because it is a boring name and somehow we saw millions of dollars being committed to the upside on very low usual options volume for a name like Aflac. What do you know since that time, since that bet, Aflac is up over 20 Likewise, we caught a trade for space last week, Virgin Galactic. Another bullish trade, significant amount of money committed to the trade, millions of dollars. And you see space exploding higher this week. So again, you look at a list like this and you comb through it and you will see and distinguish between the insider trades, the educated trades that are predicting something to happen, they know something before it happens, versus the Robin Hood, it's wild shots and gambling. So again, these trades are important to pay attention to and to interpret the right way. Because remember, yesterday we saw significant amount of money buying Nikola calls. What they were doing actually is selling Nikola calls because Nikola declined double digits today. These trades were insiders, they knew something, and they opened the trade ahead of time. So what do we have here for today? We saw significant activities for JWN Nordstrom, and I followed one of these trades. So let's take a look at them. Number one, they're buying the 26 puts expiration date on Friday with expectation that the name will fall over 10%. You saw a massive pop today, and this is a wild shot costing 5 cents per option. If JWN experiences a very good, strong reversal on Friday, selling the news from Black Friday, this trade will be very profitable. But the one I followed is a different one. It is the 25 puts for JWN, expiration date December 18th, with expectation that the name will fall over 13% by then. And these were trading for about 70 cents an option. Now here is what happened today. The put option trade for JWN caught my attention right away. Furthermore, I got two technical alerts for JWN today telling me to short the name. So I had technicals on my side and I had the activities in the options market to verify my technical analysis. I did enter a short trade. We will talk about it more during the charts analysis. But here's another construction for work, Slack Technologies. And this is a calendar call buying the 40 calls expiration date December 4th and they're paying about one buck for this trade and then they're selling the 40 calls expiration date this friday and they're collecting about 30 cents for those all in all the entry price is reduced to 70 cents an option and you got a week for the name to climb over 12 percent for your trade to be profitable now here is another one a very significant one costing a lot of money for Jumia Technologies, JMIA, they're buying the 45 calls expiration date December 18th with expectation that the name 
will climb over 23% by then. This trade was very expensive. Over 5 million bucks were committed to open this trade today alone. Very notable activities here for the name. And then we see here another one. Talk about unusual and a boring name. Alcoa, the ticker double A. And I followed this one as well. They're buying the 38 puts expiration date December 4th, meaning next week, with expectation that the name will retreat over 7% or so. These cost about 40 four cents a piece and again the trader committing over three hundred thousand bucks for this trade alone now when i saw the trade in the morning i looked at the chart of alcoa and the technicals support the trade so i entered this one as well what about the ticker li lee motors another big one here costing over one million for this trade alone buying the 38 puts expiration date next week december 4th we have news for you about the Chinese government cracking on EVs and you saw Xping down big today and here is another one fading Lee Motors and perhaps calling the pop for the bubble in the EV makers stocks. Now here is the Robin Hoodiet one, the professional, you see it for Alcoa, for Nordstrom, but here is a name for the Robin Hoodiets taking a wild shot for Kodak. They're buying the nine bucks calls expiration date Friday and they're committing about 15 cents for this trade. Another highly unusual one for Caesars, CZR. They're buying the 80 calls expiration date December 18th and this trade of course is costing around half a million bucks. Notable activities here for Caesars. And the last interesting one for Square, buying the 230 calls expiration date next week, December 4th, and they're paying about two bucks and 40 cents for this trade a piece. Moving on to the headlines of the day and the slew of economic data we got in the morning. Right away, we heard about the weekly jobless claims they came higher than expected once again. The V-shaped recovery in the jobless claims is taking a hold and turning to the worse. Over 778,000 claimed weekly jobless unemployment last week against expectations of 733,000. And of course, having over 700,000 people claiming unemployment every single week makes me more uh, optimistic and bullish about the sales for the new iPhone. And the flow of economic news in the morning continues. We heard about consumer sentiment falling once again in late November. The number fell to 76.9 down from all the way at 81.8 in october consumers are getting very pessimistic why because there is no stimulus and they continue to lose their jobs and their income but i keep hearing about how this holiday season spending will somehow exceed all expectations maybe if the feds is gonna buy all the toys in the world sure but the consumer is getting more worried their income security is dwindling and their savings reserves are being exhausted and here we go u.s consumer spending moderates in october we're starting to slow down with no stimulus but we did see u.s household spending rising meanwhile incomes decline it sounds like an oxymoron here. Wait a minute, you're telling me that incomes are down, but somehow households are spending more? What are you talking about? Two explanations. Number one, the haves are spending more. The rich households, of course, the pandemic is the best thing that ever happened to them. They're going on a spending spree and they're splurging, buying homes and toys and boats and cars and everything else or the other explanation is that yes incomes are down and we're losing more jobs however the consumer is resorting to credit spending therefore you see an uptick in spending even though personal income is down now we have that credit card usage 
data from Bank of America and JP Morgan. And we covered those when we covered the earnings for banks. Both show that the recovery in credit card spending is not there yet. Consumers are afraid to use their credit cards. So was October the month when households ran out of stimulus money and unemployment benefits and now they're resorting to the last resort of using their credit cards and rack up more debt once again? That could be it. And we did see durable goods orders still in positive territory, but coming lower than last month. Things are slowing down in the economic picture, not just from the consumer side, but also from the supplier side. And you see durable goods down month over month. And here is the home sales, new home sales. The halves are taking a break here because home sales came in light. 999,000 with expectations of 975,000. But here it is, it is a slow down from last month, which came at over 1 million, just a little over 1 million. So a small decline here for home sales, but the mania and the bubble in the housing market still goes on. And moving on to company specific news. Morgan Stanley analysts are now downgrading Ford saying that its EV strategy is not clear. Or maybe the Morgan Stanley analysts did not receive the cash envelope this month from Ford. And now they're bad mouthing the company. You think these analysts don't get paid by corporations? think again. And speaking of uh, Morgan Stanley, let's talk a little bit about Mike Wilson, their chief investment officer. Now, I know some colleagues who worked under Mike Wilson, and he is known to be an asshole manager. And I like Morgan Stanley, but the problem is that if you work for Morgan Stanley, you're going to have to execute douchebag face Mike Wilson's vision, no questions asked. And Mike Wilson is a good analyst. He knows what he's talking about and he's right more than he's wrong and mike wilson why he remains bullish for the long-term outlook for the spy and the recovery specifically cyclicals he is now calling the market overcooked and due for a big correction before the rally resumes i want to get to your market call uh, which you published recently i mean shorter term you're, you're looking for a pullback longer term you're bullish though and i'm wondering if Knowing that Janet Yellen will be the, the Treasury Secretary, um, or will likely be the Treasury Secretary, does that make you more bullish? Does it make you more optimistic that stimulus will be bigger, will be more helpful to the markets, will be more helpful to consumers? I wouldn't say it'll be bigger or better, but I do think it, it relieves any kind of anxiety that things will get hung up. I, you know, our call is that we still do think we need a little stimulus in the first quarter. We think we'll get it uh, once we get to the new government installed and you know, get through this lame duck period. Uh, maybe it requires some market pressure. Uh, but look, I mean, our call on the market is, has been pretty clear. I mean, I think the index is not... And I don't know what happened there. It sounds like the voodoo who's been feeding information, stock market information for Mike Wilson is getting a little angry here. He probably disagrees with what Mike said. But despite the paranormal activities in Mike Wilson's household, he's making a call of a correction from this point on. And I do agree and trust his call. Now remember, Mike Wilson is a good analyst, but he was even better when he was selling pizzas during halftime. Moving on to Tesla, and Tesla is recalling over 9,000 Model X and Model Y cars over roof and bolt issues. Now, Reverend Elon just became the second largest, not largest, the second richest man on the planet but reverend elon has a reputation of being very very cheap we talked about him wanting to hire people part-time rather than full-time because he doesn't want to buy them laptops and we talked about the time when he forgot to pay the water bill in one of his factories and we also heard the stories about Tesla making last minute runs to Home Depot to patch up their cars and send them out to meet the production 
numbers and quotas, leading to quality issues. And here we caught Reverend Elon buying cheap bolts from Home Depot because he doesn't want to pay extra 20 cents for the high quality made in the USA bolts. And the result here is quality issues and recalls for Tesla. And maybe Reverend Elon should cut some costs by removing the entire battery from his cars and rolling them down the hill instead. That would save a lot of money, I would say. But the bad news for EVs continue here. We see that EV shares dumping, and we talked about Xping today, after Chinese officials order probes. And this is the risk with Chinese stocks in general. We heard about the rift between uh, Chinese boss Xi Jinping and Alibaba founder Jack Ma and that caused Alibaba shares a lot of pain and now we see the unpredictability here with Chinese officials launching a probe against EVs which could cause more pain for Xping, Neo, Li Motors etc. And here is a very interesting bit of news and perhaps a little teaser for the conclusion of the video. We're starting to piece out the puzzle in our paranormal investigation in this channel about the quote-unquote mysterious entity that has been propping up the market overnight. And perhaps this is a clue. Both Vanguard and Merrill Lynch have confirmed that their online brokerage platforms experienced outages yesterday. And the lady here says not even the infrastructure can handle all the equity exuberance. And my response here, yes, we're seeing exuberance and greedy, pigginess kind of uh, action in the market, extreme greed. However, the volume yesterday, all in all, was very light in general when you compare it with periods that we had in September and August. What does that tell you? It tells me at least that the mysterious entity is using its Vanguard and Merrill Lynch brokerage accounts to conduct the deed. Meaning that this entity has several very large accounts with these passive investing brokerage houses. So keep this clue in mind. Moving on to the heat map analysis and let's see and dissect the action for today. What do we see here? Right away muted action in the big boxes of Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple. But we did see significant activities in the gains here for Amazon. Amazon been very muted the last few days, trading flat. And today you see that Amazon is catching a bid. Remember we discussed before the week started that one of the scenarios for the week will be the traders will pop up the market before the Thanksgiving holiday. Buying all of these names, these holiday shopping names, Amazon, Target, Nordstrom, Macy's, etc. This is exactly what you saw this week. But what do we see here in the technology sector? A rebound in NVIDIA, AMD, the hot chips names, but a retreat for old school tech and chips names such as Qualcomm, Intel, Broadcom, AMAT, and old school big tech such as Cisco, IBM, all closing in the red. The notable decliner for the day was CRM, Salesforce, down over 5% on the news that they will acquire Slacks in an all stock deal. The notable gainers for the day here are Square, Adobe, Shopify, and Autodesk. Autodesk up almost 5% for the day. What's going on here with communication services? We talked about Google and Facebook be muted. But so did Disney declining over 1.5% and Netflix also muted. The notable gainer, Zoom. They're buying Zoom before the Thanksgiving holiday. We did this trade last week. We were ahead of time and we already made our VIG and closed this one last week. Similar story here with the video games names. They're buying him before Black Friday, Activision up almost 2%, Electronic Arts up 1%, Take Two over 2%, by the rumor, by the news, by the fact, by everything. This is the current mentality. We see Spotify being muted today, but Snapchat gaining almost 3% for the day. What's going on with consumer cyclicals? We talked about Amazon. But you see Chinese names, Alibaba, JD declining. Meanwhile, in auto manufacturers, Tesla leading the day for the gamma squeeze, day number five.
But we did see declines here for Toyota, almost 2%, Honda over 1%, General Motors over 2%, and the notable decliner here is Ford, almost 4%, on the downgrade for Morgan Stanley. What do we see here in restaurants? Muted action, but mostly negative. The notable decliner here is Papa John's over 3%. What about apparel? Down day for TJ Maxx, but the momentum name Lulu is getting bought before the Black Friday spending splurge. Down day for travel and the reopening names in general. Today was sort of like a baby mini rotation of the rotation back to momentum. You see Marriott down over 1%, Hilton over 2%, and of course yesterday I dumped my entire Marriott holdings. Cruises down, casinos down, notable declines here for LVS, Wayne Resorts, but MGM did okay, it closed in the red but muted what's going on here with consumer defensives unilever leading the gains and lifting the consumer defensives sector to close third today walmart target costco all muted but either they're going to buy them on friday during black friday by the rumor by the news or are they gonna sell them that is the question notable declines here for Kraft Heinz, tobacco, beer, alcohol, Cisco, all closing in the red. What about REITs? The reverse of the theme for the week. American Tower rebounding, closing in the green. Simon Properties reversing and closing in the red after massive gains in the last few days. What's going on for utilities here? Muted overall, but I've been watching the chart of Dominion Energy and I did buy calls here on expectation for a rebound in Dominion Energy. This is the beauty of doing the heat map analysis. You start looking at the picture from the bird's eyes view and you see opportunities here and there that you wouldn't see otherwise. What's going on with basic materials? Again, the reversal for the theme that has been going on for a few weeks right now. We see other metals rallying and gold miners declining. Not today, it is the reversal. Gold miners are gaining, closing in the green. New mount up over 1.5%. Barrick Gold pretty much flat, but we see massive gains for Franco Nevada, Yamaha, etc. Copper did all right, closing in the green. You see FCX, another 2% or so gains for the day. The laggards. For the day are chemicals across the board whether you're talking about sherman williams in pain or dupont chemicals leading the weakness in basic materials what about energy the laggard of the day but the winner for the week exxon chevron down big today about three percent a piece for these two giants but we did see also declines in phillips oxy kinder morgan all closing in the red and a bad day for industrials overall muted boeing taking a break raytheon taking a break caterpillar deer emerson all declining more than one percent a piece and we did see declines for the momentum names ups and fedex overall very weak performance for industrials today what about healthcare the weaker sector for the week but today was not a bad day for healthcare specifically biotech names big pharma muted nothing going on here astrazeneca another day of declines after they revealed the vaccine trial results the bulk of the pain here is for health insurers united health anthem humana all down about one percent or so declines for cvs but gains for Walgreens. Very interesting here. And we see Moderna resuming to rally mode up over 10% today after big declines yesterday. Muted action for Regeneron here. We're waiting for a bounce after the whack yesterday. It did not happen today. And what's going on with financials? The weakness here is for regionals. And you know that I have a bet against the KRE regional banks. And it is working today big banks the notable decliner is jp morgan over one percent meanwhile 
the action in the rest of big banks is muted similar story with credit cards exception of course paypal up over four percent again they're buying the holiday spending names ahead of time and moving on to the rotation trade and again you see it is a baby mini rotation of the rotation back to momentum and the theme once again if it wasn't clear for you during the heat map analysis here it is they're buying the holiday spending names ahead of time we're talking about shopify we're talking about paypal we're talking about peloton and zoom because the surge of activities during the thanksgiving holiday very clear theme here across the side of the aisle the notable declines here profit taking for chevron planet fitness tj maxx marriott just like i did yesterday Emerson, all of these names that have been running a little hotter. General Motors finally taking a break here, down over 2%. We know that Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors, dumped about over 60 million bucks worth of shares last week. So even the CEO is fading the action in General Motors here, not just me. I think the name ran too hot, too fast time to hit the brakes. And by the way, let's talk about the rotation trade a little bit. We do have this uh, Tom Lee personality, which the media treats as if he was the Messiah and that he can predict the future ahead of time. Now we have uncovered the mystery in the puzzle with Tom Lee in a previous video. Tom Lee is a con artist. He plays the audience because he understands the law of probabilities. We know that the probability is favorable for a Santa rally because the phenomena happens more than it doesn't. Tom Lee calls the obvious, says, oh, this year we're gonna have another Santa rally too, citing with the highest probability, the obvious. And when we do see a Santa rally, of course, what Tom Lee does to differentiate himself is spice it up a little, giving you an exaggerated gains forecast. If it is usually 2-5%, to 5 he says, oh, it's going to be a 10% Santa rally. And when it happens, because it is the obvious, the media treats Tom Lee as the messiah. And now they're talking about how Tom Lee called the rotation in his epicenter stocks, quote-unquote. Remember, Tom Lee has 7 million names in his, quote-unquote, epicenter names. And again, if only 30% of those work, they will tout him as a genius forecaster, and look at that Tam Lee called the epicenter stocks. And here are stocks A, B, C that rallied double digits since the call. Remember, in this channel for my older viewers, not in age, but in time. Remember that we have called the rotation before Tom Lee. And I surgically picked few names, 19 names, touting them as the comeback stocks and I've been recommending that you nibble at these names and buy them back during the summer in August when they were not doing so hot so and everybody thought it is crazy to abandon the big tech trade and move to these lagging names. But here is the three month performance for my rotation trade names. Right away you see that for the momentum names aka the stay at home stocks the big tech names, we're talking about Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, all lagging and actually declining the last three months. What gained in the momentum names are the very hot, smaller names like Peloton, Zoom, DocuSign. We know the story with Tesla and the recent squeeze. But all in all, if you followed the rotation trade as I was doing back in August and September, you did a lot better than sticking to momentum because here are the results. You see that the majority of the names up over double digits whether it's southwest over 28 percent american express almost 20 percent general motors over 50 percent similar story with six flags mgm grand over 25 percent marriott the only name that did not gain double digits here is mondelez but when we picked the name i told you that mondelez is sort of a hybrid name it benefits from the stay-at-home environment and the reopening environment all in all, the rotation trade outperformed in the last three months the momentum trade. And I did not have to pick 100 stocks to claim that I'm right. Only sticking to 19, picking them surgically. Moving on. 
to the charts analysis and what do we see here here's the spy 15 minutes chart today was pretty much flat we did not do anything for the spy there is no new development we are still between the support line of 359 and the resistance of 364 and a half almost at that level which by the way resembles all times highs so we'll see what the spy is going to do on friday to close a very critical week from a technical perspective moving on to the queues 15 minutes chart the queues were not flat they actually gapped higher and continued to climb closing above the important level of 295.35 the queues been lagging and the theme could continue on friday and we see that the queues are outperforming the market again and what's going on with the dollar index 15 minutes chart you see this pop that we saw on monday and we thought that the dollar index has a final act to perform that didn't happen the dollar started melting down slowly but surely creating this downward trend line and what we saw today is a bottoming formation a saucer like bottoming formation and what we are likely to see here is that the dollar index will break the downward descending trend line projecting a rally here in the short term for the dollar index now what happens if we are looking for a rally even a mini one for the dollar index that means pain for gold and here is the daily chart for gold we have reached the very critical level of 1800 which should be a very solid support but if we do see the dollar popping higher from this point on gold could break support and flush lower here is the question is there a scenario when gold and the dollar index can rally together yes there is and that would happen if we see a decline in yields speaking of yields let's switch to the t and x the 10 years treasury yield what is going on here we saw the bull flag formation but i called it a fake one i don't trust it and instead i will short the kre i gave the bull flag formation enough time to pop higher but now it started to turn into a meltdown so i made a bid against again in the tnx what do you know the tnx started rallying just slightly right after that and today we saw flattish activities we declined a little bit but we picked up and we closed just below the 90 percentage points now the problem here usually if you have a solid bull flag formation the breakout is a little stronger than what we have seen here what i see here is a lack of momentum and strength to go all the way and try and challenge the one percentage points and i'm sticking with my bearish call for the kre to take a retreat from the very big rally it's been on moving on to the tlt what do we see here a reversal and a decline we were hopeful for a continuation of the upward movement in the tlt because we are looking for a reversal in the stock market that would be distinguished and identified by outflow from equities inflow in bonds but we're not seeing that we're seeing outflow from bonds today further verifying the risk on mood that the market has been on and here is the vix what do we see in the vix another day of declines but this time around the vix declined more than its etfs meaning that yesterday when we saw 30k certain traders got excited called it a top and they went on and stampeded to buy uvxy calls today they were proven wrong maybe they will be proven right in the long term but they were bidding on a really fast trade buying the uvxy calls it didn't happen today and you saw that the uvxy and vix etfs declining more than the vix itself aka back to normal even though the vix looks very bad right now I am giving the VIX the benefit of the doubt. I am calling that the VIX will surprise to the upside very soon. It will not collapse all the way back to its natural habitat between 12 and 15 before performing one last act. Moving on to Tesla. Any new development here? And by the way, we skipped Apple because Apple is pretty much flat. Nothing happened today. But Tesla, different story. We saw a big rally today. Continuation for the squeeze. And Tesla is now almost bigger than Berkshire Hathaway. Amazing. Insanity right there. The poster boy for the bubble, although it's a toss-up between 
Tesla and Zoom. When am I going to short Tesla? You know when. The 84 level for the daily RSI. And older viewer for this channel. And again, we're talking about time period, not age. Remember when I called the top in Apple and shorted it via a weekly RSI call. So I'm trying to do the same thing here for Tesla, the daily RSI, not the weekly this time around. Similar story for TJT Target. Where is the number? 79 and a half we're not there yet when we get there perhaps on friday traders get excited they buy the news for the black friday spending we see target popping higher reaching the 79 and a half in the rsi that is the point i would be very interested in shorting the name but here's a different story for JWN Nordstrom. And here's a tweet I fired today for a trade I entered for JWN buying the 25 puts expiration date December 18th. And notice the time here. I fired up this tweet around 10 a.m. Pacific time. Let's take a look and see what happened for JWN from a five minutes perspective. Right away, you see, when I fired up my call, to short the name, around 10 o'clock, it's starting reversing and closing lower from the highs at the end of the day. So this is the Maverick Wall Street effect right there. I short, they go down. I'm just kidding, of course. Sometimes I short and they go impulsively up instead, just to rub it and stick it in my face. But here is why. I had two alarms set for JWN. Number one, a general alarm. When I wake up in the morning, I have an alarm, an alert request for any stock trading above the 80 level on the RSI because these are shorting opportunities. And today, during trading hours, I got the alarm and the alert that JWN has reached and cracked over 80 on the RSI. So that was technical signal number one. Technical signal number two. When we switch to the weekly chart for Nordstrom, I have the level of 28 identified as the resistance where I'm interested in shorting Nordstrom. Today we hit the target, so there you go, two technical signals favoring shorting Nordstrom right there. Combine that with the information from the options market and you have a trifecta of information confirming the Nordstrom is a short from here going forward. And by the way, the trade is already up big for today alone. I expect Nordstrom to decline from here. And perhaps the name is an indicator to what's going to happen on Friday. Instead of buying the news, they might sell the news and dump Target, PayPal, Nordstrom, Macy's, etc. It could happen, but it is certainly not the current mentality of the market. The current mentality of the market by the rumor, by the news, by the aftermath. And moving on to the conclusion of this video. We've been trying to identify the quote-unquote mysterious entity that has been popping the market overnight, creating these gaps that you see on the charts and trying to bait retail traders to join the rally and buy the market. And here's a food for thought from a tweet I released right after the bell. This whole game will end in tears. The Fed's decision to prevent a market crash along with the economic crash by unleashing the tsunami of liquidity only succeeded in creating the most dangerous bubble of all time. The pop will magnify the economic crash even larger than before. Now, why is this important? Remember, the Fed's entire purpose for the tsunami for liquidity is the excuse that we don't want to see a double whammy for the economy here, where we see a microeconomic crisis and a market crisis, stock market crisis, hand in hand. And if we do see a crisis in the stock market, that could pour over and amplify the effect of the crisis on the economy. That certainly happened during the 09 crash. Now, we are several months past the beginning of the COVID-19 economic crisis. And my theory here is that the Fed initial purpose and objective from starting this cocaine operation is to prevent a spillover from a market crash into an economic crash and thus amplifying the pain. And this is why Fed presidents have been pleading with the federal government to supply the market with stimulus because the Fed has exhausted most of their tools to prop up the stock market and prevent its collapse. We're aware of the lack of response from the federal government's side, not supplying the market 
and the economy with a new round of stimulus. So to prevent the decline and the collapse in the stock market, what can the Fed do from their current tools? pretty much nothing but what they can do is they can indirectly buy equities remember the fed doesn't have the mandate yet to buy stocks but what if the fed through its foreign shell companies and by the way did you know that the central bank of the country the federal reserve has shell company accounts where we the taxpayer are not allowed to look at and perhaps that through its collection of foreign shell companies the fed is using passive investing accounts to create computerized programs to buy the market overnight and during trading hours creating the illusion to market participants that the market will continue to rally creating FOMO among market participants and those waiting on the sidelines to hop in by the market and pick the rally from this point on. It's sort of like performing CPR on a patient and at some point you're hoping that their internal system will take over and they will breathe on their own. The Fed is doing that because they believe that we are far away from the recovery and if we don't see a stimulus and worsening economic news the stock market could crash and that crash will pour and spill over into the real economy where companies whose stocks crashed will have to resort to firing employees because their financial standing has changed significantly to the downside from the market crash and that would amplify and add extra pain in the unemployment picture so the fed believe that they're doing the right thing here by preventing a market crash so it doesn't spill over into the economic crash and causing more pain as a result here is the problem when you read the state number one the fed believes that the market should be trading down and it is in a bubble territory and overvalued but they're willing to pop it higher and higher until the economic recovery on the ground gets a little better meaning that at some point they will stop supporting the market. They will let it crash when the macro and microeconomic picture can absorb that particular crash a little better. Now, what does that mean for me and you retail traders? It means that we are fools if we take the bait and buy the market because the market will crash eventually when the floor support from the Fed is lifted. And here is the last thing about this. Yes, the Fed is trying to prevent the spillover from a market crisis into the economic crisis. But what they have done instead is creating a massive assets bubble in the stock market and the situation became very dangerous here because what if the bubble burst ahead of the time where the fed expects it to and what if the pop creates a domino effect a snowballing effect of selling and the fed fails to stop the bleeding and we witness a market crash before the economy the real economy that is experience gains enough gains to the recovery where it can absorb a market crash what will happen then is that the crash from the biggest bubble in our lifetimes will spill over in a massive way into the real economy creating a magnifying effect to the current economic pain meaning that what the fed did if this scenario happens and takes place is what they tried to prevent in the beginning, they only delayed and they made it worse. So they better pray that whatever they're doing in the mysterious entity account, they can supply and support the market until the economic picture is ready to absorb a market crash. Just food for thought here. Let me know what do you think in the comments. And by the way, before I log off, happy thanksgivings to everyone all the subscribers and the followers for this channel have a good time spend it safely with your family if you can eat a lot of turkey and don't forget to get drunk but the take here is to remember that there are very unfortunate people in this economy or waiting on food lines but they're not going to have enough to eat this holiday they're probably not going to have family members and they're suffering in silence being drowned in debt losing their income, worrying about how to survive the next month when they're delinquent already on rent and mortgage. So keep these people in mind, donate if you can, and happy Thanksgivings, and I will talk to you again on Friday. 
If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.